The Enoch and Anunnaki connection they don't want you to know. You know the truth is being hidden from you. The story you've been told is incomplete. The real story of the Bible has been buried for centuries. The powerful elite have hidden the book of Enoch from you. In the 4th century, the Council of Leota decreed that the book of Enoch was apocryphal. This meant it had to be removed from the biblical canon and any church teaching or quoting from the book of Enoch would be excommunicated or worse. But why did the church decide to exclude the book of Enoch and why was it forbidden for hundreds of years? As you'll see by the end of this video, the church wanted to hide the book of Enoch from the masses because it goes completely against the narrative they want you to believe. It tells the real story of fallen angels, a lost race of giants, the birth of human civilization, and the coming apocalypse. Despite the church's best efforts to cover up the book's existence, the truth has still found its way out. The first major discovery occurred in the 18th century when Scottish explorer James Bridge Bruce rediscovered the text in Ethiopia. Bruce found that the Ethiopian Orthodox Church had been teaching the Book of Enoch for centuries. The texts he found were in Giz, an ancient Ethiopian language, making their authenticity hard to prove. But then the biggest discovery in the history of ancient religion was made entirely by accident. In 1946, teenagers in the West Bank stumbled upon the Dead Sea Scrolls. These teenagers found a collection of ancient manuscripts in a cave near Qumran. Their discovery led to a series of archaeological digs that uncovered more caves and more manuscripts. Among these manuscripts were fragments of the Book of Enoch believed to have been written during the 3rd century BCE. This proved that the Book of Enoch was once widely taught by Christian churches all over the world. If that were true, what made the Council of Laotia decide to remove it from the biblical canon? What is in the Book of Enoch that they wanted to keep secret? Who is Enoch and what can we learn from reading this forbidden text? Let's explore this lost book and discover the secrets it holds. To put the book of Enoch into context, we must first understand who Enoch was. Enoch was a prominent figure in the book of Genesis. He was the great-grandfather of Noah, a righteous man, and it is said that he did not die but was taken to heaven. He was a prophet and a scribe who appears not only in the Bible but is mentioned across many ancient cultures including the Greeks, Egyptians, and Babylonians. Some texts even credit him with overseeing the construction of the Great Pyramids of Egypt. The Book of Enoch itself is divided into five separate volumes, the Book of the Watchers, the Book of Parables or Similitudes, the Astronomical Book or 1 Enoch 7282, the Book of Dream Visions or 1 Enoch 8390, the Epistle of Enoch. The book in its entirety tells the story of the Watchers' descent to Earth and the devastating consequences of their fall. The Watchers looked down onto Earth from the heavens and saw that the human race was multiplying. They saw the beautiful human women and desired to take them as wives and have children with them. The Watchers, in their arrogance, never considered the consequences of their actions. Two hundred Watchers came down to Earth and engaged in sinful relations with humans. They also introduced humans to forbidden knowledge described in the Book of Enoch as charms, enchantments, and the use of plants for mag -ical purposes. The interbreeding of the Watchers and human women resulted in the birth of a race of giants, also known as the Nephilim, described in the book as being 3,000 elves approximately 15 feet tall. These giants were incredibly strong and incredibly dangerous. The giants' great appetites led to widespread destruction and food shortages. Facing starvation, the giants turned violent and began devouring humans. The Watchers, seeing the chaos and destruction they caused, devised a battle plan against the Nephilim. The Watchers taught the human race about the use of metals to craft weapons and armor. They gave humans the power of speech. They taught humans about the sun, the moon, and the stars, and they told humans about the cosmos. And this is one of the main reasons the Book of Enoch has been banned. In the text, Enoch describes in great detail the cosmic order. He tells us about the solar calendar and the orbit of celestial bodies. He tells us about the cycles of the seasons, and he tells us about the celestial beings that came from the stars to Earth. 
These sophisticated and specific details combined with the story of beings coming to Earth and creating a new race bear an undeniable resemblance to the stories about the Anunnaki mentioned in ancient Sumerian tablets. This fact has led experts to believe that the fallen angels known as Watchers are in fact the same beings called the Anunnaki. The comparison of the Watchers to the Anunnaki is strengthened even more when we learn what happened after the Watchers imparted this forbidden knowledge onto humans. The Watchers looked down upon the earth. They witnessed lawlessness and bloodshed. Violence and corruption spread throughout the world. In the Book of Enoch, this is where God orders Uriel to go to Noah and warn him about the Great Flood. The flood that will destroy all life on earth save for Noah and his family. This Great Flood is the same flood found in the story of the Anunnaki. Here the flood is divine retribution from God, but in the ancient Sumerian tablets, the flood was caused by the warming of the earth during the Anunnaki civil war. This civil war is represented symbolically in the Book of Enoch when the Archangel Gabriel incites the giants to fight each other until their mutual destruction. And this leads us to the next major reason the Book of Enoch has been kept secret. The next chapter in the book gives us a clue to the fate of the Watchers and therefore the fate of the Anunnaki. The book states that the fallen angels who had relations with human women and imparted forbidden knowledge to humankind were to be cast into a desolate place. They were to be placed in the desert and covered with rocks and darkness. There the fallen angels would be imprisoned for 70 generations until the final judgment. This part of the story parallels the disappearance of the Anunnaki in the ancient tablets where it is said that the Anunnaki found refuge in subterranean tunnels during the Great Flood. The Great Flood cleansed the earth of the evil and corruption caused by the interbreeding of the Watchers and humans, and after the Flood a time of peace was established. The earth was blessed with abundant flora and fauna, but this is only the beginning of Enoch's message. What follows is a vision of the realms of heaven and a prophecy foretelling the final judgment of all things. Enoch tells us of a vision in which he is summoned by clouds, mists and stars which carry him into heaven. There he arrives at a crystal palace surrounded by fire that burns with both fire and ice. Within this palace he finds a throne, a crystal throne with wheels burning like the sun, shining brighter than the sun and whiter than snow. Experts in the study of the Anunnaki believe that Eno wasn't taken to heaven but instead was taken aboard a spaceship and shown other worlds. They believe Enoch was chosen to be the leader of the human race. They believe he was given knowledge of the Anunnaki origin and their plan for humankind, and they believe he was tasked with keeping this knowledge secret from all except his bloodline. Some believe this chosen bloodline still maintains control of the world today through secret societies, advanced technologies and strategic manations. What do the secret chosen rulers want? What are they capable of and how do they keep their manipulation of the masses secret from those of us enlightened enough to seek the truth? What else has been hidden from us? We'll explore that and more next time. Until then keep your eyes and mind open. Thanks for watching. Because the powers that be want to suppress free thinkers at all costs, they will censor me for exposing the systems of manipulation at work.